Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing that we say is repent that they might live. Let's open up to uh, John 3.16. This is John chapter 3, verse 16. Tim Tebow. <laughs> just me, I get down to the touch on it. <laughs> I'm just, I just love Jesus. I'm a good Christian. And they ain't like him for that, though. He ain't even doing it right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so imagine, imagine if told me was for real about this day. Man. Bro, you know, Eric Reed still ain't signed because of protest. He was protest with Cap. He's a Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl safety. Play for the Niners. They hit them boys. Like, oh, you ain't gonna, oh, you gonna protest. Okay. They ain't, they ain't afraid of it either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't even a secret for them. It's John 316. Yeah, I think blatant. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? What? That's the purpose that the Most High God sent them. All right? He sent them only for the purpose that people have everlasting life. That's what he tried to offer to the, to the folks. Sound real good. Let's keep going, though. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right? He didn't send his son to condemn, tell people that they're doing stuff wrong and, and judge them and send them to hell. That ain't why he sent them. Why he sent them? So people might have everlasting life. His purpose of sending them was everlasting life, not to send everybody to hell. Right? That's book. That's what it just say. You know what I'm saying? We, we talk about all this stuff. Sometimes people might get the wrong idea. That's what he, you know what I'm saying? That's what he came for. He came now to give people everlasting life. That's the reason now. Let's keep going. He that believes on him is not condemned. See, if you believe on him, well, guess what? You're not condemned. You believe on his name? Nah, you're not condemned. But what? But he that believes not is condemned already oh. because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now you see why the man didn't come to condemn your butt. You've been condemned. <laughs> right? He told you himself. He said, don't think that I came to accuse you before the Father. Who came? Who, who accused him? The Moses. He said, Moses is cute. That's why we read this law. That law going to pin them down every way. Right? That thing going to be, you hear these people, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm so glad I don't live in them day. You know what that, that's AKA for? I'm a darn sinner. I don't, I don't like that law because that thing already condemned me. Right? Y'all sure came so he can get that condemnation up off your butt. Right? What are you going to come down here and condemn you for Moses already did it? He killing time if he do that. Moses, he going to do is tell you what Moses said. That's why he kept on saying, does your law, law not say? What did Moses say? You know what I'm saying? Moses already told y'all y'all sinners y'all going to darn hell. He didn't say hell, but you know it. You got the message. He already told y'all y'all some darn sinners. What, I'm going to come here and come back again? Oh, yeah, y'all may have forgot, but y'all still sinners. I ain't got no time for that. No, what I'm coming down here for, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hook y'all up. I'm trying to get y'all a way out. I'm trying to get the condemnation off of you. Right? He said, he that believes on him is what? Is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. You been condemned, boy. That ain't nothing new. You been. Why you acting like it's new? Somebody come by and tell you, oh, the Bible say you'll go to hell, you do that. Why you going, oh, I can't believe you. That thing ain't new. You been condemned. I ain't saying nothing new. Keep going. Watch this. 
This thing get real better. And this real is better. the and this is the condemnation. And this is the condemnation. So he already told you, you don't believe, you condemned already. But let me break down for you what that condemnation that you already condemned in is. Right? This is the condemnation. Define it for us. That light has come into the world. Light came to the world. And this is how you know you condemn. Right? He's saying this is the condemnation. In other words, this is how you know you're but condemned. Light came into the world. And what? And men love darkness rather than light. Your but love the darkness rather than light. And what does that look like? Because their deeds were evil. Could he still sin it? That book, I don't know why they don't ever read. I don't know why, I don't know why Tim Tebow, when he is on the field, you know, he had 316. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why he didn't put 316 through what, 20? Yeah, 19. 19? 316 through 19. I didn't feel like that's what he should have put on there. Because, I mean, at least you can get people the full picture. You get that one verse, you have people just floating. Make it feel good. Jesus loves me. Right? You give them that next verse, oh, he didn't come to condemn me. You know what I'm saying? But they don't get the whole picture. That's the whole point of what we do is to make sure people get the entire picture. People get the entire picture. That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? I was talking to uh, uh, the radio station, KVV, and they probably watch it. She said, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know if it's a she. Whoever is responding to me in the messages, you know what I'm saying? They said they watch some of the video. They a little uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? A <laughs> little, little uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Look. They a little uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? They doing never put us up there. They doing a little. They doing a little. Uh, they doing a little highlight thing. You know what I'm saying? They probably put me on there if I pay some money. They doing like a little free highlight thing, or they want to highlight ministers in the Las Vegas Valley. So I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm interested. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? I serve the Most High God. You know what I'm saying? First thing she said. I, I assume it's a she. I don't know why I assume it's a she. It might be a male. So I uh, excuse me if you're watching it. I get, you know, I get you wrong, but, you know what I'm saying, first thing they say is like, it's like, okay, ask me a whole slew of questions, do you believe in Jesus Christ, are you a Christian, this, that, and the other, da, 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 do you believe that he's the son of God, did, was he born of a virgin, this, that, and the other, so I lit they but up just surprised the mess out of them, I was like, uh, not a Christian, I'm a disciple, this, that, and the other, yes, I believe in the son, you know what I'm saying, he is born of the virgin, you know what I'm saying, it's Mary, you know what I'm saying, this, that, and the other, I'm just running it down, and she's like, all right, they, they don't know, like, that's good that you, you know, you serve the son. You know what I'm saying? And this, that, and that. So they asked me so a whole bunch of other stuff. Then, uh, then uh, you know what I'm saying? I kind of dialogued with him for a little bit. She came back. Well, this, I watched some of your videos, and it seems like you're anti-Christian. You know what I'm saying? She's like, uh, or the person was like, uh, 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 and this highlight is more about what you do in the community and what you do for God and how you represent God, not about how everybody else is wrong. I was like, well, I mean, if everybody else is wrong, it's kind of important, but I understand what you're saying. I ain't heard back from him since. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't heard back from him since. You know what I'm talking about? But you know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they hit me up. Maybe they watch this. I hope you do. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they ain't got to be right. Right? You can get all these other Christians on there. You can get them out there. Everybody sound good. Talk about how they feed the homeless. You know what I'm saying? I told her, too. I was like, yeah, you can get, there's a whole lot of people that go out there and feed the homeless. And that thing nice. You know what I'm saying? We done done it. We've we done some stuff like that, too. But I was like, that's not our focus, though. Our focus is what Martha was. You know what I'm saying? Our focus is not what Martha did. Our focus is what Mary did. Mary said at the feet of the Messiah. She said at his feet. He came in there. Martha, she is busy serving folks. I mean, good. I mean, service. You're right? She's serving folks. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to serve people now. She came in, she is serving folk. Got some food, cleaning up, make sure everybody taken care of. Mary butt, lazy butt, just sat down, right? As soon as Yahushua came, her lazy butt just sat down right at his feet. Guess who Yahushua commended? Mary. Because she did what was needful. She did in there learning. What are we going to get up there and start working before we know? Well, it looks like I bring y'all, bring young brothers and sisters in here, and then they haven't had a chance to really even understand. They still Christians. Because they haven't had a chance to really understand and become disciplined in the teaching. Then the first thing I do is I take them right out there to, to you know what I'm saying, to some people that's on the streets. We start feeding them. One of them dealing with alcohol, and you got an alcoholic that you're giving, uh, giving something to. Now you, you see somebody that you spot. Now the dirt that's always been on your body that you came here to get it off of you, now you fall because you get tempted by seeing something out there. What if that happened? What am I, did I do something wrong at that point? I caused my brother to stumble. Right? I caused my brother to stumble. No, let me make sure the truth in you. All the rest of this stuff will come. Let's set a foundation. 
Let's get enough people around you to uphold a standard. That way, when we do go out there, you got a bunch of people that'll hold you accountable. Not a whole bunch of people that's in the same position as you. Right? But they don't see the logic in it. A lot of people don't see the logic in it. They, they got this other, it's all about show. Right? It's all about, you know what I'm saying? It's all about looking good, appearances. I don't care how I look. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how I look. If I care how I look, I'd be up here huffing and puffing like the pastor. That's what you see. You see these young people. I got, I got people I know, I hung out with, party with, my age. You know what I'm saying? They get on, you know what I'm saying? I talk to them. I see them around, talk to them, sound like regular people. As soon as they get, get in front of, front of their church, because they, you know what I'm saying, they pastors now. They get in front of their church. They say, oh, and the Lord. Uh, I'm like, you, why are you 29? Why are you talking like you're 29 and you're from Vegas? Why you sound like you're from the South? That's worse than these rappers. That's all it is. It's a performance. And it's like, okay, so this, if that's what y'all want, I understand. I get it. That thing don't bother me. That thing, let me tell you something. That's testimony against y'all. You know what I'm saying? That thing might have been the best thing ever happened. If you, I mean, if your, if your goal is the kingdom, that thing might have been the best thing you ever had. Your goal not the kingdom. I might ruin some of your listenership. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go like the kingdom. I might, you might lose if you listen to <laughs> around with me. I get not from business sense. I get it. I ain't gonna see your act like I don't get. It. I get it. Business won't be good. You know what I'm saying? But if we talking about the kingdom, oh, we can teach some folks the truth. We can teach some folks the truth. We can teach. We can. We can. We can take John three sixteen and give them the whole picture. I ain't scared of touching none of these people verses. We can go to the most Christianized verses in the world. All of it is true. Grab, uh, what's another Christian? Just throw one out. What Christian verse do we got? Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Um, he who believes on the heart. What is Romans 10? That's Romans 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab Romans 10 for me. <laughs> Let's deal with they stuff. Because, I mean, every one of them, you be feeling like, no, this is, no, definitely. Right? This, I mean, this tells me for sure. All you have to do is just believe on Jesus Christ. That's cool. I ain't telling you not to believe on Jesus Christ. Believe on the man. Believe on the man. But just make sure when you believe, your works follow through. Make sure you believe that thing authentic. But separate your belief from the, from the hypocrite belief. Just because you feel you're not a hypocrite? That thing don't make sense. How you going to trust how you feel about it or something? How, how you going to trust your intentions? Book even tell you the way of a man's heart is always right. In his own heart. In his own heart. Right? When he looking at it. Why we don't pay attention to that stuff? We like to quote it. I mean, we quote that thing. But why it never... It, it seems like these things never apply to us. People just be quoting just as Christian as they want to be. Quoting this on the way of a man's heart. That thing never apply to you, though? You never turn that verse around and be like, hmm, how do I feel? What's the way of my heart? Right? How do I feel about this? You know what I'm saying? That thing never apply? Whole book got to apply. Whole book got to apply. We got to clean this thing up. This is it Romans chapter 10? What I want? Verse 10? Nine. Verse 9? This is Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Give me verse 8. What verse 8 say? Oh, but what saith it? That the word nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, faith which we preach. Uh-huh. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. He said, if you shall confess with thy mouth. Uh-huh. The Lord Yahushua. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Yahushua, Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. And then all you got to do after that is just believe that God raised him from the dead. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Yahushua, Lord Jesus. And you, you also believe that he raised him from the dead. What happened? Thou shalt be saved. That's it. That got that. That's a book. Who gonna argue against it? Nobody gonna argue against it. Christian take that thing. They run with it. Get the bump in their head. Nobody's arguing against that verse. What am I argue for? Guess what I'm gonna do? Tell you. Keep reading. Let's go. That's all. Why we stop? That's all I'm trying. Why do we stop? It's a whole book of information. If it was all John 3.16, the book would be a lot shorter. That's it. We ain't got time to be feeling good. You feel good, something ain't hitting you right. Words supposed to make you feel bad. Words supposed to cut you. You ain't never felt a double-edged sword? I cut myself one time with a knife. That thing was a soft little butter knife. What a double-edged sword gonna feel like? That thing supposed to feel good? That's crazy. It don't make no sense. 
That made no sense. Double edged sword is supposed to cut. That thing's supposed to hurt. That thing's supposed to be painful. He said, My word is like what? Two edged sword. What else? And fire. Fire. And what else? A hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Those three things that he described his word as. And there's more in there too, but these three of them fire, double edged sword, and a hammer. You tell me where the word is supposed to make you feel good. Now, I ain't saying the word can't make you feel good either. I'm just telling you, it definitely is supposed to make you feel bad. You take it how you want to. I ain't making this stuff up, though. Let's see. Keep going. For with the heart, man believe unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Right? Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. With the heart, what happened? And the confess. No, go ahead, read it for me. With oh. the heart. For, uh, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. No, no, no. no. Oh, wait, 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 before. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So with the heart, you believe on the righteousness. It's very important what he's saying. With the heart, you believe unto righteousness. What else? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What came first? The heart. Okay. Let's keep going. I'm just gonna make sure the whole thing lined up. Watch it. For the scripture says, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. That's right. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Right? Brother asked me today, like, what's the benefit of a black man, you know what I'm saying, finding out that he a Hebrew? I was like, well, there's many benefits. I almost said it like Paul, much in every way. You know what I'm saying? Chiefly. You know what I'm saying? Much in every way. I was like, there's many benefits. You know what I'm saying? First of all, on an individual level, the benefit is that we understand that we have a history and a culture, and that culture is connected directly to the Most High God. I was like, that's something big. That's something special, especially for people some, that don't have an identity. Some, some that no nation on this earth can say. No nation on this earth can say. And honestly, we one of the only nations on this earth that don't have an identity. So that's special. Right? It's like going from one extreme to another. We have no idea who we are. To goodness, we had the most history in this in this world. Right? I mean, it's like going from one extreme, so that's big. That's a huge, that's a huge thing. What's the other benefit? Well, the other benefit is it's a lot of people that believe this book. Or say they do. A lot of people don't know who the real Israelites are. So a lot of people are trying to interpret the book and look at prophecy and all this stuff, and they don't know who the people are. Alright? So it don't just benefit us, it benefit everybody. Even Paul told us, he said. He said, if, if the casting away of Yisrael was the, uh, salvation, of the, world, was the salvation of the world, what is going to be the gathering of the Israelites? But life eternal, right? The resurrection. So that's our benefit, right? The benefit to the whole world is when the Most High God brings us back together, this whole thing going up, everybody, everybody getting saved who, uh, who serve the Most High God. Right? We get to see something at that point. That's the benefit. Yeah, like they, the people that's waiting on the Most High God, they waiting on him to grab us. They waiting patiently, yeah. resting. Yeah. Right? So that's what we look at. Right? It has to be a benefit. That's what it is. Right? All this stuff got a purpose. Why it can't be the truth? When was the last time they asked one of these fake Jewish people what's the benefit? They never asked them. Right? We've been conditioned to think this, though. Right? And the brother that asked me, no, you know what I'm saying? That's the brother. We had a good talk. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, we just been been conditioned to think that. We've conditioned, been conditioned to ask these questions. And I know what he was doing. He was just asking me because he wanted to see what or the, my head was. Immediately after I answered, he was like, praise God. It was a test, right? He just wanted to see where you coming from. You know what I'm saying? How you how you feel? Are you like these other Hebrew Israelites who, you know what I'm saying, Bash take this stuff? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I understand why he's asking. But it's just the condition. That's what, that's not the first time somebody asked me that. Right? It's the condition that we think. We taught to think that way. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna ask none of these other people. You ain't gonna ask you ain't gonna ask none of these white folks who go to uh, ancestry.com and try to get their DNA traced. What's the benefit of finding out that you're Irish? What's the benefit? What does it do for you? Right? That's legacy for them. It does a lot. It gives them perspective, it gives them value in life, it gives them identity, it gives them culture, it gives them something to be connected to. That's powerful psychologically. Why well, we can't have it? That's all. Why these people don't want us to have it? We got our, our better now. I ain't got to prick myself with no darn needle to get it either. No. All right? Just look into the book and obey it. That's it.
All right? Even if you ain't connected by blood, you look into the book and both obey it, you good as you good as blood. What's somebody gonna say to you? What a Hebrew is like gonna walk up to you and say, say you Gentile. I'm obeying the book, boy. And you lying on it. Lying on it. Talking to a lot of people just start talking about a race thing. I talk about race because we comfortable. Only, only reason people are uncomfortable talking about race is because these people made it uncomfortable. You look at Time Pad, these people are comfortable talking about race. You look at these white folks, they comfortable talking about their own little races. They all different, they all different people. You know what I'm saying? We like to look at white folks, they all the same. You, all these people come from different little countries. They all different people. Right? They talking about their own little race. Oh, the Irish are doing this. Even little, you know what I'm saying, little jabs at each other. Oh, the Irish, you know them. They always going to get drunk. Right? Let that, that same word, let them say something like that about a white person. Let them say something like that about a black person. Oh, you know the black person. They always getting drunk. Racist. Right? Because we have to do that because it protects us. Because these, see, it's different. The Irish person, y'all ain't never hung the Irish person on no darn tree. Right? Y'all ain't never drugged the Irish person from the back of your darn truck. Y'all ain't never beat them. Y'all ain't never created an entire police force just to keep the Irish person on the slave, uh, uh, being a slave. Right? Those things never happen. So now it means a little bit more to us. You know what I'm saying? You start, you start get to talking all that racist stuff. That thing, it triggers something with us. But the Irish person, y'all good. I wish we, I wish we could be like that. I wish, I wish we could talk about our, our uniqueness and our differences and all that and nobody get offended. I wish you can be like, oh, look at the black people. They always talk this way. You know what I'm saying? That should be okay for us to do. But it's because of they, they took our people and they enslaved our people and they used this stuff against us. That's why everybody's uncomfortable talking about race. I ain't got to be uncomfortable talking about it. Racism ain't even wrong if you look at it. Racism just prefer, you're supposed to prefer your race over somebody else. It's just uncomfortable when y'all do it now. Because y'all abused it. And y'all abused our people. So now we got to sit here and everybody got to be uncomfortable walk on eggshells. It shouldn't be like that, but y'all should be ashamed of yourself and ashamed of y'all ancestors. Because it is like that now. Nobody can say nothing now. Nobody can talk about how being unique. We should be proud of each other's uniqueness. I should be able to look at the white person and be like, you know what, you do that well. Right? And now you have a legacy of doing that well. Like, you can tell that's in your people to do that well. And you should be able to look at me the same way, you know what, y'all can't y'all do that well. But you tell me we all run faster, guess what? That's racist. Well, yeah, we do run faster. We are more athletic. Why is that racist? Why is that a bad thing? It's a bad thing because y'all abused it. It's a bad thing because in the 60s and the 70s and the Olympics, y'all made fun of us. Y'all tried to act like we came from monkeys and that's the reason why we is faster. That's why it's a bad thing. Right? These people don't have no perspective. None of this stuff, none, nobody telling nobody the truth. I don't care nothing about no racist. I don't care about talking about racist. I don't care about everybody. I call my son light skin and dark skin and pit him up. That should be normal. Shouldn't be nothing wrong with that. It make everybody else uncomfortable because we've been made uncomfortable to talk about race. Now everybody's uncomfortable talking about race. It's just a taboo subject. We should be proud of our own race. Shouldn't have been nothing, nothing what Hitler was talking about. You know what make it wrong? When people start getting killing folks because of this stuff. Saying that, you know what, I think I had a supreme race. That's cool. Let's compete. Let's all be on an even playing field and let's compete. Let's see who come out on top. You ain't going to call most high God racist. He said he took us from monks. He said, he said he ain't never loved the nation. He ain't never took a nation and taught them all they laws. He said, what nation is there? He said, I'm going to make you a peculiar people. That's racist. You taking a certain group of people ethnically, and then you raising them up and making them higher. You're preferring them above another. Technically, that's racist. We ain't gonna call it, we ain't gonna accuse him of it though. Right? Because there's nothing wrong with it. Racism in itself is not wrong. It's all this other stuff they, they add on to it. They use your racism to be evil and just do and, and, and abuse people. That's what these people gotta apologize for and come off of. The most high God gonna deal with that stuff. Till then, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. Make my little jokes and, 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 and enjoy everybody's uniqueness. All right? That's what it's all about. That's why the Most High God brought us together. They ain't crazy if you thought that ain't why he brought us together. And that's why he split all the people up. He told you to spread through the earth. What do you think? He, thought, you thought, he told you to spread through the earth just so everybody can be the same. You can be the same right where you are. 
I made everybody different. Y'all go to y'all different areas. I'm putting y'all people here. Y'all, this the Isles of the Gentile. This is where Hamites and Canaan and all them gonna go. And this is where I want Shem. And they even within them groups split up and learn different things, do different things. That's why he put us together so we can work together. That's why everything you do with the Most High God got a congregation to it because you're taking different people, unique people, and bringing them together. What do you think he was talking about when he said uh, the body has a lot of members? Because everybody does something different. Not everybody the same. We should be able to celebrate that. Talk to me about no darn racism. Call me darn racist. Y'all crazy. Ain't nothing racist about me. I ain't never hung nobody from no darn tree. Don't talk to me about no darn racism. Where we at? Romans 10. Let's keep going. <clears throat> For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So let's get down to the business, right? Whoever going to call on the man, guess what's going to happen? Daniel, if you call on him, what's going to happen? That's book. What are we going to do with that? The book say it. These Christians come up to us and say that. What are we going to say against that? They're going to say, all they got to do is call on them. <laughs> and what are we going to say? We ain't going to be able to, um, no, you lying. That's crazy. You right. All you got to do is call on them. That's right. You good Christian, but you can just get the calling. But, but hold on. Let's keep reading. <laughs> Before you get to just calling, let's just ask, a, I just want to ask a few questions. Paul want to ask you a few questions. All right? Let's see. Let's see here, Paul. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Now, let me ask you a question. When you get to calling, how are you going to call on somebody that you haven't believed? But, but, but I do. Uh -uh. Hold on. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? Now, after you think you believe in him, how you believe if you haven't even heard from the man? Oh, but I have heard. Hold on. And how shall they hear without a preacher? But I heard that you say that you heard. And I heard, based off of what you heard, you say you believe. And based off of what you believe, you call. But how did you hear if you didn't even have a preacher to tell it to you? But I do got a preacher. Hold, hold on. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Mm -hmm. Is your preacher sent? Right? You might have a preacher. And you might have heard the words that your preacher said. And based off of what your preacher said, you might believe something. And based off of what you believe, you might call on somebody. But the question is, was your preacher sent? Let's see if we can figure out was he sent. Let's keep going. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. He said the gospel of peace and brings glad tidings of good things. What does he say next? It's talking about the preacher. right? The preacher is going to bring the gospel to the people. All right? What's next? But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They have not all what? Obeyed the gospel. So at the end of the day, guess what it's going to come down to? Obedient. It's going to come down to obedience. I mean, we can, we can work this thing so many different ways. When it said, believe on from the heart. And then for the what? From the mouth is confession is made. You start with the heart though, right? And then it's the mouth. What did y'all have said about the heart? Out of the heart comes what? Evil things. What else he say about the heart? Regarding treasure. Now the treasuries of the heart. Comes what? Blasphemy. Evil thoughts. He said from the treasury of the heart come speech. The stuff that you say come from that heart. So he's saying from the heart you believe. And then from there you confess. Now, Yahushua says the things that come from your heart is what defiles a man. Right? So now let's put those two together. If Yahushua is saying, if you commit adultery, fornicate, you uh, False witness. lie, right? All these different sins, if you do any of those things, that's indica uh, that indicates that your heart is defiled. Now, are you with a defiled heart at the same time saying, I believe on Yahushua? But a defiled heart. Now, that's why it's very particular what the man is saying. He said, he said, believe that the Lord Jesus. Right? Guess what Yahushua said? 
Why call me Lord if you what? Don't do what I say. But he said, believe the Lord Jesus. Why call me Lord if you don't do it? He said, many, many say unto me in that day. What is that? Lord, Lord. But he going to say, I, he said, depart from me, you workers of what? Iniquity. Because they did not obey. I mean, how do you want to line this thing up? If you know the book, you look at this, you say, amen. The Christians look at the book, they saying the same amen. Amen. Two different thoughts. Because it's somebody who's putting it in context. And the other person is just taking a couple verses out, feel good. We can't afford that. Go ahead and have me on the radio show. You know what I'm saying? These people be all right. They'll be all right. He told me it only be, it'll only be 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? 15 minutes, they, I can't even say that much in 15 minutes. They'll be all right. I'll light they butt up in 15 minutes. I'm just sitting there talking fast. Hey, 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 one more thing. You know what I'm saying? They all finished. Hey, one more thing. You know what I'm saying? Getting they butt out. What's wrong with these people? Need you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better do so. that. They help y'all out. You know what I'm saying? Cleanse y'all radio station. It might. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Most of I got might cleanse it. You know what I'm saying? It might, it might, let you, it might save some folks. I just, I, I just want the people to be saved. You know what I'm saying? Let, at least I had the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just sick of people. I, I look out here and, and, you know, I know, right? Just cause from knowing the book, I know that the Most High God reserved seven thousand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know He did. I'm just saying, none of them seven thousand outside of none of them seven thousand around here. <laughs> Why am I sitting here and just? Uh, this is what begin me. Why am I sitting here and pretend? Well, you know, pastors might be right. You never know. When I, why? I'm going to tell you what I know for sure. What I'm preaching is the truth. Well, you just cocky. Uh, listen, you can call it whatever you want to say. I don't have time to play with souls. If people lives on the line. I can tell you this. What we teach is the truth, period. That's all I can tell I can't tell you about nobody else. It's not because I'm in competition. I don't want you. I, don't, I can care less. If a man of God was right next door preaching the truth, chances are I wouldn't be preaching it here. I'd be right next door with him listening to the truth. I'm not in competition with nobody about no darn word. I ain't even in competition with these liars. Because if I was, I'd be putting out ads and doing all this extra stuff, handing out flyers. You know what I'm saying? Call it tracks. You know what I'm saying? Going on the street, handing out tracks. If I was in competition, I'd be doing the same as what they're doing. Trying to catch up to them. I ain't in competition with nobody. I'm just preaching the darn word. That's it. If they ain't got that, what I'm going to do? I just want the people to have an opportunity to be saved. Let the word get out there. You know what I'm saying? Let me get on there and say what I want to say. You ask me, I believe in Jesus. He died on the cross. I believe it. He's the Lord. He's my Lord and Savior. You know what I'm talking about? What you talking about? I'm good. Come on. I passed the test, didn't I? You know what I'm saying? He was born to Mary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Virgin. She a virgin. Yeah, praise God. You know what I'm saying? That's all the stuff they want to hear. They want to hear all that stuff. And all that stuff is important. They want to hear. Guess what she never asked me? She had never asked me, uh, do you have to stop sinning to make it into the kingdom? That's the first, that's the first thing I want to, me personally, that's the first thing I want to know. I want to be like, all right, so how do you get into the kingdom, though? If I'm going to test somebody, I just want to know. Right. Guess what? That's the one none of them get darn right. None of them. Hebrew is like Christian. You ain't going to see none. If I sin, can I make it into the kingdom? Just yes or no. Well, you know, brother, it ain't really about the sin. Okay. That's all I need to know. I have, you, you, you enjoy the rest of your day. You have a good one. <laughs> all right. Well, brother, it ain't. As soon as you get that, they start whispering for no reason. I'll be like, what the world are you whispering? We did that on the regular time. Well, well, now, brother, now. You get the whispering for no reason. All right, yeah, I know you ain't going nowhere. We can just we can go ahead and cut this thing right now. Grab for me, grab uh, Numbers chapter 17. Let's try to shoot through this. So remember last week, the people, uh, the people rebelled. All right, and after the people rebelled, uh, you have, I mean, not, not after Korah, uh, Korah and a, and a group of, of folks, one from Reuben and a couple from another, a couple other tribes, I think it was like 250 or 150, uh, it was 250, 250 what, what? Uh, it was about two, 250 uh, men of renown, you know what I'm oh, saying, yeah. warriors, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? It was like 230, 250, something like 250, that. 250, it was somewhere around there, over 200 men of renown, you know what I'm saying, then they came down, and uh, they are like a uh, Moses. You, you ain't put too much on yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're doing too much, in other words. And most of you doing too much. Why you feel like you're the only one? We all hope. Most high God is near to all of us. We all saved, in other words. You know what I'm saying? We all saved and sanctified. Why I can't preach? 
Right? Why I can't make sacrifices? Why I can't do all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Go back. Many members. Everybody got to play their part. Everybody got to do what the most I God say. The way he said it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they got that. Moses was like, listen, you don't know what you're doing. Y'all take too much on y'all darn selves. Let me show y'all something. Most I God, long story short, ended up swallowing their butt. Right, into the, right from the darn ground. Swallowing their butt. All the people got back. But they rebelled against Moses again. They looked like, man, you mess around. You out here killing them. Remember, they coming right off of the back of the Most High God saying, you going to stay here. And Moses is telling them this. Moses is telling them that God told them, told him that they're going to stay out there for 40 years. That's not a good message. I'm coming from Egypt. I thought I was about to go see a land of milk and honey. I've been walking all this time, been eating bread, tired of darn bread, still can't get no darn meat. Then all of a sudden, you telling me I'm going to be out here for 40 years? Oh, that's crazy. So you can imagine, it's like, okay, things are getting real haywire. So they kept on rebelling. So now, this is, this is the last ditch effort. The Most High God is about to show us some stuff. It's Numbers chapter 17, verse 1. Let's try to shoot through it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods, Write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I met with you. All right? So a rod, what it's talking about, it's talking about a stick. All right? So you're talking about like a stick or a staff. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, take these, the 12, oh, I mean, uh, all the uh, tribes of Israel, and then you're going to take uh, for Levi. You're going to put Aaron's on there, right? So you're going to put all their names on there. And for Levi, instead of putting Levi, you're going to put Aaron. All the other tribes, they get their name. You know what I'm saying? The tribe leader's name. But he said, for, for Levi, you put Aaron. Make Aaron the head. He was like, let me show y'all something. Watch this. Keep going. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. Mm -hmm. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Right? So he said, you're going to have a staff. You know, you imagine like a wood stick or a wood staff. He said, I'm going to make it blossom. You just take a stick. You cut it off of a tree. You know what I'm saying? But he said, I'm going to make the thing blossom where, where flowers going to grow out of it. He's like, the one that had flower going out of it, that's the one I chose. Right? He's trying to prove something to the people at this point. Let's see. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each prince won according to their father's houses, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. Mm -hmm. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. Mm -hmm. and, Moses, and Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. And Moses did so, as the Lord commanded him, so did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever comes, whosoever comes anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. All right, so shall... now they're feeling bad. They're feeling ashamed. All right? They're feeling ashamed. They're looking at it like, okay, we die. You know what I'm saying? We see the Most High God, he, this, this, all this time he's been doing exactly what he said he was going to do. All right? We, still, we feel ashamed. Grab, uh, grab Leviticus chapter 10 for me. All right? They starting to see how serious the Most High God is. He's been trying to hint, hint to them the whole time. Even when we talked about Moses and Miriam and Aaron. Right? All this stuff he's trying to hint to these people. This is serious. Like, I'm, I'm very strict about what I'm telling y'all. This stuff ain't no walking apart. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just sitting here letting stuff slide. Y'all think I'm letting it slide. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying attention. This is Leviticus chapter 10. Uh, you can go ahead and start me at verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord. This is Aaron's sons, right? Aaron's sons, they, they offer strange fire before the Most High God. In other words, they offer fire in a way that, that wasn't appropriate for the Most High God. Right? I didn't tell you to do it that way. They got sensors. Sensors are made to have fire in them. Right? But the way they did it in the, at the time that they did it wasn't appropriate. 
What do you think the Most High God did? Oh, y'all made a mistake. You got to try it again. Let's see. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. That's it. He making examples at this point. This is a brand new thing we setting up, and y'all want to play around? Y'all want to start off by misleading the people? No, I got to be strict. That's crazy. I can't, I can't, y'all just got put in place. Y'all the only example that the people got and y'all do it wrong? Or your butt out of here. Fire just reached out and devoured their butt. Right? Watch the next part. Y'all think, y'all think that was bad. Watch this. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh to me, and before all the people I will be glorified. Mm -hmm. And Aaron held his peace. Aaron did what? Held his peace. That's it. He said, this is it. In other words, hush. All right? Most like God gave him his explanation. You know what that explanation was? Oh, I'm going to be set, set apart. These people going to see me differently. All right? When they come around, these people going to see me differently than they see everything else. All right? They going to glorify me. All right? Aaron was like, I, ain't gonna, I can't even say nothing. What Aaron going to say? He just saw his two sons get devoured by fire. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut my mouth. I ain't got nothing to say. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know, how, like your older sister, your older brother. You know what I'm saying. Get in trouble. You know what I'm saying. Your mom come out. Who next? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It ain't that you don't care about your older. You know what I'm saying. Cause they're in there crying, screaming. You, you your heart feel for. You got a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You just hold your darn pee. That's crazy. Why don't you keep going? And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphon, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Mm -hmm. So they went near and carried them in their coasts out of the camp, as Moses had said. So you notice Aaron's sons carried their brother. Uh, that was his cousins. Read again. So Moses called Mishael and El Zaphon, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So my mistake, that was Aaron's cousin. You know what I'm saying? He uh but they would be considered brethren because the father sons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But technically Aaron's cousins, you know what I'm saying? You notice that they carried him out. Right? It wasn't Aaron. Watch this. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eleazar and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes. He said, Uncover not your head. Watch this. Neither rend your clothes. Don't rend your clothes, lest you die. You know, you know why we, we when we got sad or mad or something, you know, what I'm saying anything largely emotional at one time, we rip our clothes to kind of express our our pain. You know what I'm saying? And then we uncover our heads as well. You know what I'm saying? That's, those, those are signs that we're going through pain. He told them, don't show your pain. Your son don't know. I know your son just died. I know your brother just died. Don't show your pain. Neither do what? Neither rend your clothes. Uh-huh. Or uncover your heads, lest ye die. Uh-huh. And lest wrath come upon all the people. Uh-huh. But let your brother and the whole house of Israel be well the burning which the Lord has kindled. Let them cry about it. Let everybody else cry about it. Your butt stay just how you are. And look, guess what else he told them? And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation lest ye die. Stay your butt right here. Don't even go out there and go to the funeral. Your butt got to stay right here in the door of the tabernacle. Or else your butt going to be dead just like them. But we had this idea that God out here playing. Because he letting stuff, it feel like God letting stuff slide right now. So everybody, you know what I'm saying? Nah, God, when you know his character... You know what you're dealing with. Ain't nothing slide. Nobody getting by. Ain't nothing slide. Grab Matthew chapter 8. Ain't nothing different. People even ask the Old Testament. You know, Old Testament God. He's just, he just got nothing. I'm talking about the Old Testament God. In Matthew chapter 8. Give me verse 18. Now when Yahshua saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee wheresoever you go. And Yahshua said unto him, The foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, 
but the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Yahushua said unto him, Follow me and let the bear dairy, bury their dead. Right? The dead bury the dead. Right? We look at it like, oh, God was harsh back then. It's Yahushua saying the same thing. Don't go to the funeral. You stay right here. You got to stay in the tabernacle. He is the tabernacle. He said, follow me. Stay right here. Right? You let the dead bury the dead. Ain't nothing changed. Right? It's just us that we change. Right? We think things are different because most of our God lets some stuff slide or we think he's letting it slide. You know what I'm saying? So we think something different. Ain't nothing different. You know what I'm saying? Most of our God, he's strict. When he has a purpose and something that needs to be represented, he, you know what I'm saying? This is not saying that it's, it's illegal or it's wrong to celebrate or, or memorialize a, a person, a loved one. That's not what this is. the message is. The message is you got to weigh what's more important right now. You got the son of the most high God in front of you. Are you telling me you going to leave to go bury your dad because you really, really love him? Right? You have a new thing going on in the wilderness right now. Miracle. You got to establish the people. You telling me because your son's messed up, that's more important than representing the right thing for the people? Nah. We got to make the right choice. That's all this is about. This is about what's in front of you. Right? Any one of us. We can't use that as an excuse to be like, all right, well, you know, somebody dies, so, you know, I ain't going to do it like the dead bury. Now, that don't make no sense. All right? We ain't got nothing like that when we wait. I was going to say, that's not even the same. We're not even in the same situation. Yeah, not even, not even a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? But, but, but if, you, if you run across that situation, it come down to, I got to choose God or choose this. We got to be out to choose God. That thing got to be, we got to be ready to do that. Otherwise, we'll mess around and mess up. It's Leviticus 21. I didn't want y'all to see how he dealt with the folks. What verse? Uh, verse 1. It's Leviticus chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, This is directly to the priests, the sons of Aaron. What are we going to say unto them? There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. This to the priests, right? He said, There shall none be defiled for the dead of his people. What else? But for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother, and for his father, and for his son, and for his daughter, and for his brother. Right? He said, The only ones you can be defiled for, mother, Father, son, you know what I'm saying? Daughter, you know what I'm saying? Your brother. Keep going. And for his sister, a virgin, that is nigh unto him, which has had no husband, for, for her may he be defiled. Mm -hmm. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. That's right. Like, you a chief man. You can't defile yourself, and you can't profane yourself. All right, let's hear about it. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. Neither That's shall how they, they would profane themselves. They make baldness on their head, right? They pull out their darn hair, rip it out from pain. You know what I'm saying? You inflict, you know how people now, they get sad and they start inflicting pain on themselves, start cutting themselves. That's the same idea. People just, they just did it differently back then. They would pull on their hair and just inflict pain. What else would we do? Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Right? We'd take it off, you know what I'm saying? We'd shave off the corners of our beard with a razor, right? And inflict pain on ourselves, right? We'd make cuttings into our flesh, right? All this stuff, this is what we do when we're sad, when we're angry. People still do it. People, people say, all this stuff that people do, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing changed. It just, they just found a new way to, 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 to skin the cat. That's it. Keep going. They shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. Mm -hmm. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. They got to be holy. Right? Watch this. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God. Most I got strict. There's somebody out there for everybody. Yeah, it is. But it's a very particular person when you're a priest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That thing got to be very particular. You can't just go out there getting everything. I'm, oh, I'm a pre. I can't. I mean, but you just never know. God might just, God just might, yeah. God might just a lot of things as long as he meet these criteria. You know what I'm saying? That's it. 
I'm a preach. What I'm gonna do? You know what I'm saying? You can't just go out there and just go marry anybody. You gonna take you a widow? Oh, your husband died. Nah, I'm good. All right, keep going. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offered the bread of thy God. He shall be holy unto you, for I, the Lord, which sanctify you, am holy. Mm -hmm. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, shall profane her father. She shall be burnt with fire. That's it. You a, you a daughter of a priest? And you play the whore? You got to be burnt by fire. Right? We ain't got no law about that. You know what I'm saying? You got other harlots. You know what I'm saying? You got harlots. The harlots are harlots. You know what I'm saying? The book here, if you a daughter of a priest and you a harlot, nah, you got to be burnt with fire. What's a harlot? How you know you a, why you become a harlot? Someone who has sex outside of marriage. Fornication, that's it. Right. Right? That's it. That thing got it. We, we kind of look at it, well, you're a whore because you have sex with a lot of people. No, 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 no. Book, book said that uh, Dana was treated as a harlot. They said he, he treated my sister as a harlot. They only talked about one time they had sex. And he is about to marry it. That's the cold part, but he's going to marry it. Still treated as a harlot because you wasn't married at the time. Right? Keep going. And he that is uh, he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garment, shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. Now you see what the Most High God told him. All right, Most High God was in that moment setting the standard for the people. He's like, "Oh, you the high priest." That's what he said. He said, "He that the high priest got the anointed poured poured over his head. He got the oil poured on him. Oh no, he can't even he can't he can't rend his clothes or take off his hat." All right, keep going. Neither shall he go in to any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. You can't defile yourself for your father. You see the brothers, I mean the sons, you know what I'm saying, the priests, they can, you know what I'm saying, certain people, you know what I'm saying, you can, you can defile yourself for. You the high priest? I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care if it's your daddy. What up? Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God. Mm -hmm. For the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he shall take a wife in her virginity, mm -hmm. a widow or a divorced woman or a profane or a harlot. These shall he not take. He said, I can't touch none of them. I got to have a virgin. You a high priest? You got to have a virgin. I mean, but you just never know where God brings. He can bring whoever he want, wherever he want to take them. I'm a priest. Mine got to be a virgin. And I think I'll get right back cracking in the wilderness when we come back out because most of I said in Revelations, he need, what, 144,000 to pay? That thing going down. <laughs> <laughs> I got to set these boys up right. You got to connect this thing. You know what I'm saying? That thing going down. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff, all this stuff we look at, we look, oh, you know what I'm saying? Our, 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 our philosophy nowadays and all this stuff that we you know, we've been conditioned to think it's all wrong. I mean, sometimes you just got to give people a chance. You can give people every chance you want. I'm a priest. I got to have a burden, period. I remain alone unless I got a burden. That's, that, that just don't make sense. Book just told me I can't have a, I can't have a widow. I can't have a harlot. I can't have, uh, uh, I can't have nothing, right? I just, the only thing I can have, she got to be a burden. I got that, right? She can't be divorced. Mm -mm. Got to be a virgin. That's book. Right? So you see how strict the most high God is. He lines us up. He sets us up. He's letting us know, this is how I want you to react. This is how I want you to be. This is, this is the standard that I want you to uphold. And if I'm close to a situation and you don't uphold that standard, I'm trying to establish something right now, I'm getting your butt. Right? That's why the brothers got God. Right? That's how we understand what happened in the wilderness. That's why the most high God was putting so much, so much importance on this is who needs to do it. Let me make this flower bloom so y'all understand. I want y'all to know I'm not just being mean to y'all. I want y'all to know I chose him to do a specific job. Right? They looking at it thinking it's all fun and games. Meanwhile, what's happening to Aaron? I just lost my two sons to this. I didn't choose this. Right? I didn't choose it. I didn't say, hey, I want to. Core over there running in our mouth. I can do it too. I, yeah, I can do it too. Aaron didn't choose that. Aaron just got told one day, you're going to be a mouthpiece to Moses. Okay, that led to him being now the priest. That led to his two sons dying because they're into something that they ain't had no business. Right? That's kind of how we have to think about these things. These people ain't when God choose something. Ain't nobody choose. 
Your stuff gonna come with a little bit of burden too. Anything that? you do for the most high gonna come with a burden. Who was that saying? He was like, man, I was a shepherd. No, I was a shepherd. Then the most high God told me to come and tell y'all. Yeah. Was that was Amos? What, Jeremiah? Jeremiah. Oh, that was, it might have been Amos. Amos yeah. That was Amos. Yeah, like, man, I was a shepherd. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I didn't want nothing that to do Amos. with this. Well, I think Amos 8, actually. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's exactly. That was a good one. You know what I'm saying? Give me uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. Yeah. You got to marry a version of his own people. Of his own people, too. All right? Don't be going out there getting you no darn Gentile. No, a priest can't do that. No, oh, that thing got to be clean. Uh, what you say? First Peter, chapter 1. It's First Peter, chapter 1, verse uh, mm, 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahushua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold mm -hmm. from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, mm -hmm. but with the precious blood of the Messiah as the lamb, as a what? As, a, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He said, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. All right. That's what he's trying to get across to the to the priest. He's letting the priest know, your butt got to be blameless. You got to be clean. You can't be near, near no dead bodies. You can't be doing all this cutting and stuff. That leads the people wrong. Everything you do got to be blameless. Right? That's how Yahushua was. Yahushua was blameless. He said, I'm presenting you as a lamb without blemish, without spot. Most like God took that stuff serious. Grab uh, Ephesians. Right? Yahushua is going to do the same thing with us. This is Ephesians. Chapter 5. Excuse me. It's Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Give me verse uh, 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as the Messiah is the head of the church, mm -hmm. the congregation, and he is the savior of the body. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as the congregation is subject unto the Messiah, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Mm -hmm. Husbands, love your wives, even as the Messiah also loved the congregation and gave himself for it, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He gonna sanctify it and he gonna cleanse the congregation by the washing of water and the word. Watch this. That he might present it to he himself. He gonna present it how? To himself. Uh huh. A glorious congregation. Uh huh. Not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Whole goal is to clean us up. The priest stood up there, right? Aaron, he stood up there. He had to be clean, right? Had to be all together. Couldn't leave the temple. His sons died. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't leave the tabernacle, right? All because guess what? At some point in the year, he gonna have to make a sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? A sin offering for all the people on the day of atonement to atone for the sins of the people. Whole point of it is to make the people clean. I need you to be clean so I can make the people clean. That's why Yahushua had to be presented as a lamb without blemish. He had to be clean for what purpose? So that he could take the congregation and present it to himself without blemish. How am I gonna get the people clean if I'm not clean? Right? Grab uh, grab Numbers chapter nineteen. Numbers chapter 19, verse 1. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Right? A red heifer. All right? A red cap without spot, wherein there was no blemish. And there came no yoke. We ain't never put this, this heifer to work. We never put this, this cow to work. All right? Keep going. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp. And one shall slay her before his face. Mm -hmm. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven right? times. He gonna take the blood and note it. He sprinkled the blood. Where did he sprinkle it? In the congregation. At the tabernacle of the congregation. He sprinkled it right in the tabernacle of the congregation. Right? He take the blood from the red heifer, sprinkle it right on the, ta com uh, the tabernacle, and he kill it. He killed the red heifer. Watch this. Keep and going. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight. Her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall be burned. Mm-hmm. Burn her up. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. So they took cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet. And it's just like red. You know what I'm saying? It's like a red, uh, red material. You know what I'm saying? They took all that and they did what with it? And cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Right? So they put it into the fire with the, with the red heifer. Right? Keep going. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. Mm -hmm. And he that burns her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the evening. Mm -hmm. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the, outside the camp in a clean place. And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. It's a purification for what? Sin. Right? You take the ashes, you put it in water. That was called the water of separation at that point when you had the red heifer. Right? And the whole purpose of it was to cleanse sin. All these particulars that the Most High God gave us just to cleanse sin, to clean stuff up, to make people clean. Very particular, I wanted it exactly like this. You have to take the ashes, you put it in the water. And before you get the ashes, you got to take you a red heifer. Oh, no, no, no. That red heifer can't have a blemish, right? Can't have no spots on her, right? We could, she, no, she could never be worked. You know what I'm saying? If y'all put a yoke to her, y'all worked her, nah, we got to find another one. And she got to be a red heifer, right? They bring her over, you know what I'm saying? Slaughter her. After that, the priest going to... Get the blood, sprinkle it in front of the, 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 the congregation, the tabernacle of the congregation. All right? Then after you sprinkle it, you take her, you start burning her butt up. When you burn her, don't forget, you take your hyssop, you take your cedar wood, then you also take your scarlet and you throw it on in there with her. All right? Once it's all burnt up, priest unclean to even. When it's slaughtered, unclean to even. All right? Then you take another clean person, take the ashes, pick them up, then they can get it and put it inside of the water. And that's the water of separation. It has to be done that way. It's very particular because that's how the Most High God wanted. That's how he deals. Right? That's exactly how Yahushua is. Right? Grab uh, Hebrews. It's Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. He talking about the tabernacle, right? He said the first covenant had a had divine uh, service. So in other words, the, the rituals that we did, the things that we did, those were divine. They came from God. But 
it was for worldly purposes. Right? So it was for us here on earth. Right? Keep going. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. All right, so we talked about that. We had the tabernacle, and in the front room, you had, you know what I'm saying, candlesticks, and you had the uh, the showbread. You had all these different things that was in the front room. All right, keep going. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of the covenant. All right, so we talked about Aaron's rod, right? So all that was in the back room, you know what I'm saying? Let's hear about that back room, watch this. And over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Right? They always went to that first room. They always went to room one. Let's hear about room two, though. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The high priest only wanted to get to go in that second room, and he only get to go there once a year. Right? Keep going. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, mm -hmm. which was a figure for the time. Which was a what? Figure for the time. He said, I'm just, I'm just drawing a picture for you. I use all that. Most I God said, I use all that. I'm just drawing a picture for you. Watch the picture that he's trying to draw. Is a figure for what? Which was a figure for the time then present. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the con con conscience. Mm -hmm. Conscience. Oh, oh, yeah, conscience, of course. Which stood only in meats and drinks and div diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them unto the time of reformation. Right? So he said the way that this thing worked out, it was in meats and diverse washings. Uh, ordinances for that period of time. Watch this. But the Messiah being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, uh -huh. that is to say, not of this building, uh -huh. neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in, in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Mm -hmm. For if the blood of bulls and for goats... For the blood of bulls and goats and what else? And goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling. And the ashes of a what? And heifer sprinkling the unclean. We just talked about the red heifer, right? Keep going. Sanctifies the purifying of the flesh. He said sanctifies the purifying of what? The flesh. The flesh. All right, keep going. How much more shall the blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? All right? So he's talking about two different things, right? It's saying that the law and the ordinances were carnal, right? It was for the flesh. When we were doing all the cleaning, it cleaned our flesh. And it was served as a figure for what would happen on the inside of us, right? What Yahushua could do for the inside of us. So Yahushua comes and cleans his spirit. Now we can rewind and we can go back to what we were talking about in the beginning, right? When he said that what goes uh, what comes out of a man is what defiles a man. That's talking about spirit. Meanwhile, next week, we're going to talk about laws that talk about what we put into our body. That's talking about our flesh. Right? It's one thing to be healthy. It's another thing to be saved. One thing to be healthy is another thing to be redeemed according to the spirit. Right? Both are good. One is needful more than the other. Right? That's why Martha, when she cleaning up and she making food, that was serving the flesh. Not wrong. Serving the flesh. But Martha is down there getting something for the spirit. So even though she neglected the things of service, you know what I'm saying? She got what was needful. That has to be our mindset. Right? Our mindset has to be let's get what's needful. Right? Let's get what we need to get. Alright? Grab uh, uh, what verse we on? 14. That's 14? Um, uh, grab, read, read verse uh, 12 for me.
right? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Mm -hmm. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkled. Oh, that's what I wanted. Yeah, he said, for the blood of go uh, bulls and goats. He said, the ashes of a heifer. Right? All that is a picture. Right? If you even look at the, if you even look at the red heifer, if we, what we just read. You know what I'm saying? First thing you talk about, sprinkling the blood. Right? What does that remind us of? Yahushua. Yahushua. Right? When Herod, King Herod, you know what I'm saying? He is talking, he is like, uh, I mean, not Herod, uh, Pilate, Pontius Pilate. He is talking to him, he is like, you know what I'm saying? I don't find no guilt in this man. They said, crucify him. He is like, I'm going to let Bar Bar Barabbas go. He said, they said, no, 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 no. Crucify him, not Barabbas. I want Yahushua to die. He said, no, nah, I don't find no, uh, the blood is on y'all. He washed his hands. Right? Watch his hand. He said, the blood is on y'all. What they said? Blood, blood be on blood. us and our children. our children. He sprinkled the blood. Right? He had it. They, when, the heifer, when the red heifer got burned, guess what? It, they had to put cedar wood right in there, hyssop, and scarlet. Right? Y'all sure had to carry the wood. Right? Man from Cyrene had to help him. Simon from Cyrene. Right? Y'all remember when he was hanging in John? It said they took vinegar and what? Hyssop. Took vinegar and hyssop. Put it right in his mouth. Right? And the one thing that a lot of people miss, grab uh, grab Matthew chapter 27. We'll get up out of here. Need the water. It's Matthew chapter 27, verse 27. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27. Watch the book. I appreciate the most I got. Whole thing testifying him. Think you sitting there reading about a red effort? Lost your darn mind. Y'all were sure. Then the soldiers of the governor took Watch what the soldiers of the governor did. into the common hall and gathered, gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Mm -hmm. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet they robe. They put on him what? A scarlet robe. They put a scarlet robe. You had to, when you were burning that red heifer, guess what you had to throw in there? Scarlet. You had to throw some scarlet in there. You did it wrong if you didn't. You had to throw the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet and burn it all together. You mix that with the water, that's water of separation. And guess what? Y'all sure have hung on that cross. They wanted to kill it, but they stuck a spear in the darn side, and guess what came out? Water. Water of separation. Right? We're reading about the red heifer. You know what it said? Purify sin. That cleanse sin. What do you think the man is for us? He's our red heifer. Right? A lot of this stuff you look at, man, we just read it, man. These Christians just read this stuff. Ain't nobody taught them nothing. They ain't learned how to see Yahushua in the book. Man, that's what it's all about. Just let's learn. Let's learn the book. Let's stop being stagnant. Let's stop just settling for somebody telling us, well, Peter walked on water, but he didn't have faith. Yeah, that's nice. That's real good. I mean, that's good, and it's true, right? He didn't have no faith. But let's learn. Teach me the book. Teach me the law, right? I want to understand what this stuff means. How you, all this beauty that we have in our law, and we just, we just kick it to the side, it's done away with? This stuff is gorgeous when you read it. You look at this stuff, you learn about God. You learn who you serve in. Right? That's what we need. Next week, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into all of it because that's what the law is for us. Right? We're going to talk a little bit more about the difference between the law and, 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 and uh, the covenant that Yahushua is bringing. Notice I say is bringing. Right? All right? The, 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 the second covenant haven't got here. New covenant haven't got here yet. It's still a promise. Right? We look at it, you know what I'm saying? We're going to kind of look at the differences and kind of figure out. You know what I'm saying? What is Yahushua saying versus what is Moses saying? And what's the difference? Right? Spoiler alert. The law is, is carnal. It's made for our flesh. It taught us how to be clean. You know what I'm saying? Turn to the physical. Right? It taught us how to eat the right foods. How to deal with people the correct way. You know what I'm saying? Not running around having all types of weird sex with people. Right? You know what I'm saying? You sit your butt down. You know what I'm saying? Relax. Let me show you how to do it. This is what you need to eat. Don't touch that. Don't you be touching no darn dead body. If you do touch something, 
This is how you clean it up. You got leprosy. This is how you clean that up. We're going to try to get through all that next week. Um, and just kind of go through all the cleanly laws and everything. Um, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to, you know what I'm saying, laying with your wife. When it comes to, to, to having a baby. All these different things. The most high God covered it. You know what I'm saying? We're kind of, you know what I'm saying, just you know, to tackle as much of that as we can next week. Any questions? Let's pray out.